Heavenly Father, tonight in this most historic of all Maryland courthouses, another page in our county history is written as we observe and participate in the third inauguration of Sheriff Gary Hoffman. We ask, as you have in the past, to continue to bless him and his department and to give them your guidance and protection in all that they do for the citizens of Queen Anne's County. Amen. Amen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and um, I'm Scott McGlash, your clerk of the Circuit Court for Queen Anne's County, and we welcome, on behalf of the Sheriff, we welcome each and every one of you here this evening. I would like to, before we start though, to, to recognize a few in the audience, and this is probably a dangerous thing, politicians shouldn't really do this, but because I'll forget somebody, surely. But um, we have with us this evening our uh, three of our commissioners, Commissioner Bucky, Commissioner Steve Wilson, and Commissioner Comfort. Thank you for being here. Also, Mr. Charles Cave, the uh, Facilities Administrator for Eastern Pre-Release. Thank you for being here, sir. Uh, Acting Barrack Commander, Rob Conley, Maryland State Police. Lamont Cook, Warden of our Detention Center. Thank you, Lamont, for being here. And we were very close with Lamont. Thank you. Um, also, the two members of the Republican Central Committee, Laura, Tim, thank you for being here this evening. And Queenstown County Commissioner, or Queenstown Commissioner, Mr. Palumbo is here this evening. And um, Churchtown Police Chief, Mr. Baker, is here with us this evening, so thank you. And I also would be remiss without introducing my Chief Deputy, because Sheriff, just like you, she is my right arm, my left arm, Catherine Hager. So thank you for being here this evening, Catherine. And I want to put a plug in real quick here, ladies and gentlemen, for you in the, in the audience this evening, but also for those who will watch this later on QAC TV. I want to really commend the commissioners uh, for, for continuing QAC TV. Not only does it bring um, openness uh, to our community, to our government, but it also creates a historical uh, uh, background history, which I think is critical, critical as we look back on our history of Queen Anne's County. Uh, sheriff asked me to say, say a few things, and the Sheriff's Office, very, very unique office. Um, in Queen Anne's County, it's a direct descendant of Old England. The history of the Sheriff goes back 1,200 years, 1,200 years. The, the modern word Sheriff, which means keeper or chief of the county, is derived from the Anglo-Saxon word Shire Reeve. The Shire Reeve in the days of King Alfred the Great of England, get this one ladies and gentlemen, in 1871, was responsible for collecting taxes and enforcing the king's orders. The duties and roles of the sheriff were better defined, get this date, 1215, when King John signed the Magna Carta. The first sheriff's office in America was established where? St. Mary's County, State of Maryland, 1641. And I might say, Historically, Maryland, St. Mary's was, there were only two counties in Maryland when we first started. St. Mary's on the western shore and Kent County on the eastern shore. So I suspect Kent probably has a heritage there also. Um, and the office, uh, the duties of the office are set forth in the Maryland Constitution and they remain in effect today. The citizens of, of Queen Anne's County elected sheriff every four years. And uh, the elected sheriff is part of the judicial branch of government, as is the judge of this court and the clerk. And we just had a judge of the Orphan's Court that came in, Judge Cassius. Thank you for being here, Kim. As a third branch of government, we in the judicial branch do not have the power of the sword or the power of the purse like the legislative and the executive. We only have one guiding light that is paramount in today's society, ladies and gentlemen. Public trust and confidence. Critical. Let me proudly suggest to each of you, along with our most capable sheriff, Gary Hoffman, he continues to apply public trust and confidence each and every day and against the many, many challenges facing all law enforcement today. Across our great nation, we, we see very many unhappy things when we turn our televisions on. It's quite a bit different, ladies and gentlemen, from the days because I'm old. I remember back when the Sheriff's Department, if Bill Sharp was here, the Sheriff would tell you, Queens County Sheriff's Department used to have one patrol car, 
several officers, and one gun. One gun. That's all they had. And so it certainly, certainly has changed today. Uh, I also see something that's on vehicles that I'm awfully proud that's on, on there. A statement says, to protect and to serve. And given the issues that are facing a 21st century police force, I commend each and every one of you, ladies and gentlemen, each and every one of you who protect and serve those citizens in Queen Anne's County. And, and quickly, let me say, Sheriff, I got to put a plug in for your deputies because the sheriff serves the court, the court. And I see my good friend Corporal Angus staying on the end over there. Let me tell you, Sheriff, you, he and, and Dort and Todd, and they do a fantastic job for the court. It, and you hear these unhappy situations across courts in the United States. Let me tell you, Sheriff, those people, your deputies are ready and willing and able. So we appreciate that. On behalf of Judge Ross, thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you very much. Uh, we have some opening remarks from the Sheriff. Eight years ago, I first stood in this historic courthouse before our community and staff taking the oath of office to serve unconditionally this great county and our country. Here we are eight years later reaffirming this oath to continue providing law enforcement services to this great community. I often think of the many sheriffs that stood here before me, all laying the foundation for our safety and our constitutional duties. The oath of office is extremely important and it's a part of our dedication to professionalism, reaffirming the commitment to our citizens that it is not taken lightly. But with proving before God and everybody here, we and I will provide the best possible services to this community. There are so many people that I would personally like to thank for this continued opportunity to serve and protect. But first, I wanna thank the men and women that stand before me in law enforcement. These men and women have chosen to wear that badge on their chest to symbolize their commitment to public safety. So often when chaos or crimes occur, the public retreats to a safe location. These men and women that stand before you choose to move towards crime and towards civil unrest to ensure the safety of all of us protecting our property and life. Often we don't get to say thank you and I personally wanna thank every one of you. To my staff, I salute you for your courage and bravery I am so proud to work with each and every one of you. And I'm proud of all of you, and I want to personally, again, thank you. To the families of our staff, the husbands, the wives, the moms, the dads, the children, I want to personally thank you. These men and women that stand before you are the reason that you all are so well respected. Thank you for standing beside them. Their, jo their job is long and dangerous, and sometimes thankless. We all know the risks. We may not be home tonight. Sometimes the hug or the kiss that you give your family member may be the last. We accept that. Tonight I would also like to remember a deputy who is not here to be sworn in physically. The hat, the rose and the gloves in front of you symbolize this. On February 13th, 2001, a day that we all remember, Jason C. Schwentz was gunned down here in the town of Centerville. Tonight I ask that all of you please remember your fallen brother who in spirit and memory, I guarantee you, stands beside every single one of you. A reminder that we hear often, all give some, and obviously some give all. Please, let's take a moment to remember in silence DFC Jason Schwentz. Fellow law enforcement officials that are here tonight, my friends, thank you all for your time you've given to come out tonight so that we can continue to fight to keep Queen Anne's County as safe as it is. Your partnerships mean so much. To the elected officials here tonight, you don't go unnoticed. Our staff truly appreciates you working with us and understanding the profession and dynamics of law enforcement as it is truly a vital part of our community. We appreciate you attending and taking time out of your busy schedules to attend this with us. To my wife, Olga, I can't express enough. You're truly amazing. Thanks for standing beside me, being a pillar to lean on, and a partner. To my family, thanks for standing beside me. Thanks for all of your help and understanding in this great profession of law enforcement. To all of our public safety partners that are here, fire companies, emergency medical services, correctional officers, our warden, 
Dispatchers, thank you for your partnerships. You are our lifeline and you are our partners. To our community, we promise to continue to address all of your concerns, crimes, and issues. We will address them fairly, without partiality, and with every effort to bring them to a close and a successful conclusion and prosecution of the case. I want to let the community know, thank you for selecting me to continue serving as your sheriff. To our victims of crime, we will all continue to stand beside you and fight for justice. You are remembered every day, and it is our duty to make your life whole again as best as we can. Tonight, we're honored to be sworn in by our clerk of the court, Scott McGlashan, a true law enforcement and community friend. First, Sheriff and, and Gerard, I'm sorry. I, I think I did not mention your name, but I, I apologize for that. Gerard does a fantastic job also. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to read the Sheriff's Commission, State of Maryland, to Gary Hoffman of Centerville, Maryland. Greetings be it known that the people of Queen Anne's County, reposing great trust and confidence in your integrity and wisdom, did on the fourth day of November, 2014, elect you Sheriff. You are therefore to execute the said office justly, honestly, diligently, and faithfully according to the law, and hold the same for a term of four years beginning November 4th, 2014, or until you shall be duly discharged therefrom. Given under my hand the great seal of Maryland, signed by the governor of the state of Maryland, Martin O'Malley, at the city of Annapolis on the first day of December in the year of our Lord, 2014. And now, sir, if you'll raise your right hand, place your hand on the bottom. I, Gary Hoffman. I, Gary Hoffman. Do swear. Do swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. That I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and the laws thereof. And that I will. And that I will. To the best of my skill and judgment. To the best of my skill and judgment. Diligently and faithfully. Diligently and faithfully. Without partiality or prejudice. Without partiality or prejudice. Execute the office of. Execute the office of. Sheriff for Queen Anne's County, Maryland. Sheriff for Queen Anne's County, Maryland. According to the Constitution. According to the Constitution. And laws of this state. And laws of this state. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, sir. Now the sheriff is going to affix his signature to the test book. We have test books, ladies and gentlemen, going back in Queen Anne's County, previous sheriffs, commissioners, clerks, judges, going back to 1837. Amazing. At this time, we'll have the swearing in of the staff by the clerk of the court, Scotty McGlashan. He did. Oh, 10. Ladies and gentlemen, if you raise your right hand and repeat after I, inserting your names. I, I do, swear do swear that I will not for lucre, not for lucre or, malice or malice delay any person applying to me, any person applying to me for any business belonging to the office I officiate in, and that I will not, directly or indirectly, ask, take, exact, demand, or receive from, or charge to any such person, to my own use, any fee or reward whatsoever, for any service I may do, as deputy of said office. And that in making out the office fees, I will not wittingly or willingly charge other or higher fees than are allowed by law. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations very much. Ready, two. Oh, ready, press. 
At this time, I'd like to invite Commissioner Steve Wilson up. Steve Wilson is the law enforcement liaison that's been chosen by the county to uh, work with us and work with our staff. Good evening, deputies and staff <clears throat> and respected audience. I'm Steve Wilson, the uh, liaison to your office. I'm pleased to be here today to represent the county commissioners at this swearing in. I must say, if you could see yourself as I and others do see you, you should be proud. You're, you're a wonderful sight. In the last months across America, there's been discord in between law enforcement and elements of the public. That has not been the case in Queen Anne's County because this office has been <clears throat> exemplary and praiseworthy in the accomplishment of community enforcement. To amplify this, it has been achieved in a community that has a low crime rate, demonstrating that good enforcement and good relationships can go hand in hand. But that balance is and has been dependent on your discretion good judgment and wise practice. Speaking for your elected government and representing the will of the people, I would like to thank you for your good service and ask that this meritorious service <clears throat> continue in Queen Anne's County and that you maintain the security of the public with a harmonious relationship which together provide good enforcement. One of the marvels of the Gettysburg Address was its brevity and an imitation I will not go on realizing it is important to return this distinguished assembly to the streets or home to their families. But on a lighter note, I noticed on the news last night that December was the highest month for bank robberies and that if I were a robber, I would just this instant be emptying the bank vault. <laughs> So please return to your occupations with the intelligence, <laughs> diligence, and compassion. As commissioners, we welcome you to a new term of service with our best regards and wishes. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask any of the other elected officials if they would like to come up and say a few words. Congratulations, Sheriff Gary Hoffman. You ran a great race, and I'm proud to, serve, to say that you're my sheriff in this county. But I also want to say to these ladies and gentlemen sitting over here, this county wouldn't be what it is today without you folks. And when I, one of the reasons why I ran for county commissioner is because Queen Anne's County, to me, is the best county in the state of Maryland. And you ladies and gentlemen represent that truly. And I salute you truly, I do. And anything we can do as county commissioners to help out, we'll be there to help you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Paul Comfort, the new County Commissioner from District 1. Just wanted to say thank you to all of our men and women in uniform for the service you give. Uh, as you know, probably I'm a strong supporter of public safety. When I was County Administrator, I'm the one to introduce LEOPS to the county to give you all a great pension system. And I pledge to you that I will continue to support you and support what we can do as County Commissioners to give you all you need to enforce the laws of this state here in Queen Anne's County. I also want to extend the hand of partnership to you, Sheriff Hoffman. As you know, I supported you both times when you ran. I'm a strong supporter of you. I think you're a great sheriff, and we're going to have a great partnership in the next four years. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Good evening. My name is Christine Dula Rickard. I'm the Deputy State's Attorney for Queen Anne's County, and I'm here speaking on behalf of Lance Richardson. And I just want to say thank you very much to all of you for the service that you provide to our community. Um, I see the reports that you do, the work that you do from start to finish, and it, I'm very proud to work with all of you. Thank you very much. As you listen to Commissioner Wilson and others speak, policing today is so different than it was a few years ago. We face challenges that law enforcement never dreamed would exist, and I can tell you, I have no idea what we're gonna face in the future. I can't even imagine to begin what changes we're gonna see. I can personally tell each and every one of you 
that the citizens truly appreciate the efforts to keep them safe. From the courthouse constitutional duties to policing the streets to your level of communication with the public, it doesn't go unnoticed and it is truly appreciated. You are appreciated and respected. I often refer to this one story that really moved me a lot. It was a parent recently who came up to me and my staff has seen this in, in memo format, but they told me how a deputy, and, and you know who you are in, in my group, that changed that child's life. At a local convenience store, they greeted the child, they held the door for the child, and they even smiled, smiled to the child. The child, though, feared this deputy. The child was wide-eyed, scared to death. The child completely feared you as someone who was unapproachable, someone who the media and TV portrayed as the guy who was going to take them away. Your sensitivity to the child's fears now made this child want to follow in your footsteps and become a police officer. Your professionalism, integrity, attention to detail, bravery, courage, and loyalty shine when you put on that uniform and badge on. But it's not just a uniform. It's always remembering why you chose this profession. As cliche as this may sound, and we heard it earlier, our job is to serve and protect. Almost every person that comes in for the interview tells you when you ask them why they want to be a police officer is to serve and protect. And those challenges are before us with serving and protecting. As a percent of the population is battling mental health issues, addiction, we're facing terrorism in our nation, and the criminal element, whether it's from bank robberies to the cyber side. I know that you're all committed to dealing with these many challenges ahead, but we are assured that you will honor your oath and keep us safe. If I could for a minute bring back a memory, I'd like to call DFC Jessica Kellogg from the ranks to read you something that's familiar to all. This is the Law Enforcement Code of Ethics. As a law enforcement officer, my fundamental duty is to serve mankind, to safeguard lives and property, to protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression or intimidation, and to respect the constitutional rights of all to liberty, equality, and justice. I will keep my private life unsullied as an example of all maintain courageous calm in the face of danger, scorn or ridicule, develop self-restraint, and be constantly mindful of the welfare of others. Honest in thought and in deed in both my personal and official life. I will be exemplary in obeying the laws of the land and the regulations of my department. Whatever I see or hear of a confidential nature or that is confided to me in, a, in my official capacity will keep, be kept in ever secret unless re revelation is necessary in the performance of my duty. I will never act uh, officiously or permit personal feelings, prejudice, animosity, or friendships to influence my decisions. With no compromise for a crime and with relentless prosecution of criminals, I will enforce the law courteously and appropriately without fear or favor, malice or ill will, never employing unnecessary force or violence, and never accepting gratuities. I recognize the badge of my office as a symbol of public faith, and I accept it as a public trust to be held so long as I am true to the ethics of the police service. I will constantly strive to achieve these objectives and ideals, dedicating myself before God to my chosen profession, which is law enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. Very good job. If I could have Father Jennings come up. On behalf of the entire department, I'd like to read as a closing benediction what's known as the police officer's prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for having called us 
to be police officers. <clears throat> that you who give order to the universe would choose us to keep order. That you who are the supreme lawgiver would choose us to enforce the law. That you, the Prince of Peace, would choose us to be peacemakers. We consider a singular honor and privilege. We pray that we will never forget that on the job, we are your chosen one. We pray for courage, honesty, compassion, and common sense on every job. Please let us see your image in both those we are called to protect and to apprehend. Give us the grace to distinguish between the crime and the criminal. Give us the relentless moral strength to do what is right, the untiring physical strength to do what is necessary, and the ability to think clearly and quickly under pressure. Please protect us from all physical, emotional, and spiritual harm on and off the job. Strengthen and comfort our families. Help them to accept and be supportive of the job to which you have called us. St. Michael the Archangel, patron of law enforcement, pray for us. Amen. Thank you, Father James. Thank you very much. Um, also, Dort Connor, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention Dort. Dort is instrumental. And, and like Dort, he's getting older like I am. And um, let me say one of my most favorite television shows was Hill Street Blues. And some of you younger people may not remember that, but I love that show. And let me echo tonight as, as we close, because I feel this is almost like a roll call. And if those of us will remember Sergeant Phil Esterhouse, at the end of roll call, he said, People, be careful out there. Be careful out there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending tonight. God bless our sheriff, and uh, thank you, and a safe drive home. Pull in. 